Hi, my name is Dwayne. I'm the D in Catalo, and the young ladies of Catalo with me, and we're ready to start a new study today on Catalo Daily. Catalo Daily, in under five minutes, the biblical stories with the facts back in that the flannel graph has missed, and the show is starting now. Season two, episode one. We are going to look and move forward into the New Testament and start in a new place. And if you want to follow with us, we're actually going to start in Acts 21. Now, Acts is an incredible book that gives us the beginning of the church after Jesus has uh, died and rose, risen again and been ascended into the clouds. And so after that has taken place, we have the Holy Spirit in chapter 2 coming in and rushing upon the men there. And we see the church just explode and the amount of people who are now believing in Christ. Now, Paul, as we see his missionaries' journeys go... We are going to have him go all throughout Asia Minor and travel all around sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The great news that Jesus died for our sins and that he rose again and he completed the work and that we can be saved through faith. Paul shares that all around and now he's returning to Jerusalem where things began. And there we find James who's now the, the half-brother of Jesus who is in charge of the church there. But Jerusalem is an interesting place because they've got all of the new idea with Christianity and with Jesus as the Messiah that's been told all through the Old Testament, but now they're believing and understanding who he is. But they've also got all the ways that they've known and the law of the past. And it makes it tough because if you studied the word, you know that even Peter really struggled with the Gentiles, those non-Jews, becoming part of the family. It was always before the sons of Abraham. Though, if you look in the Old Testament, people who weren't sons of Abraham became believers through the work of the Holy Spirit. And so now we have the kind of converging of these two worlds in the center city where it all took place. And so when Paul gets back to Jerusalem, he arrives and he travels with some companions and different people and they get him to Jerusalem. And as he gets there, he meets with James and kind of the leaders of the church. And they say to them, Paul, well, we have a problem. We've heard re reports of what's going on with the Gentiles, and we're glad to hear, but the people, and in fact, thousands have accepted Christ here in the city. That's the good news. The bad news is they're very zealous for the law, which in itself is not a bad thing, but because they see the law and they're not looking for the Gentiles, we've been hearing reports come back about you and the different places you've been that, well, frankly, People are hearing that you keep telling uh, all the people there to forget Moses and to drop the law and don't circumcise your children. There's no need for that stuff anymore. That's not the case. Paul had told the Gentiles that they didn't have to be circumcised, but he didn't tell the Jews not to be circumcised. He wasn't throwing everything that God had taught in the Old Testament or Moses had given uh, under the bus. He didn't tell Moses them to forget Moses and the great work and the law that he had given. He just said we can't force those things upon the Gentiles. They're not Jews. But they can be believers in Christ altogether. So these reports have come back and the, people, the men there in uh, the church of Jerusalem say, what are we going to do? We can't hide you. No, People are going to know that you're here. And so they, they tell Paul, we have a plan. We want you to take these four guys you've had a promise, a vow that they've made, and we, we're going we're gonna to shave their heads, and we're going to ha have you take them uh, to the place of purification, have them purified, and that part of the ceremony that goes with the purification process, the week of waiting and the cleaning, we want you to do that with them so it will be seen that you follow the law which Paul was fine with doing. It wasn't a problem for him to do that, so he did. They, cut their, they shaved their heads, they took them, they, they did the time of purification and all that. While Paul is at the temple, though, he runs into some Jews who hate his guts, as they always seem to wherever he traveled. Wherever he went, people wanted to kill him. It's happened all in his mission journeys, missionary journeys, and now he's back to Jerusalem and it's happening again. All, all of a sudden, these men, it was some Jew, uh, Jews from Asia who had come back, they actually say, hey, that's Paul who's been telling everybody all around. We've been all, we've heard about all these places he's been and how he's telling them to throw out the law and Moses. And we've heard that he's, he brought a Gentile into the temple and defiled it. Well, technically, Paul hadn't done that. And so he had one of these, he had a Gentile with him named Trophia, uh, Trophimus of, of Ephesus. But Paul didn't take him there. Those guys just assumed, like, we saw him with him, and Paul went to the temple, so, boom, he must have defiled the temple! Well, that 
freaked out the people there. I mean, when they heard that a Gentile had been in there and that Paul was the defiler of the temple, oh, they got angry. And they started to grab Paul and they started beating him and beating him and they're yelling at him and they're accusing him of things. Well, remember, the Jews aren't in charge of their own nation. The Romans are. And the Romans are going to find out about this beating and they want to know what's going on. In fact, they may actually be coming to the aid of this man, Paul. But we won't know until we look tomorrow here at Catalo Daily.